Just go to this button down here that has a little uh, circle here, a little spear with an arrow pointing toward a green cube. That's the assign material to selection button. So hit that and the material you have selected here becomes assigned to all the objects you have selected in your uh, viewport. Okay. So if I go ahead and render this out, now all the objects have this Mentor Ray Pro material that's red. Now unless you're a fan of, uh, of that red or maroon color, uh, you should go ahead and change it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to change the color to a white. I'm going to go with like a bluish kind of hue and I'm going to add a little bit of a little hint of blue to it, not too much, just a tiny bit, an extremely pale blue that looks almost white. Okay. Now we have a surface finish that we can choose here and I uh, encourage you to experiment with this, check it out. You can basically make a glossy surfaces, something that has a pearl type finish to it which looks pretty cool. I'm going to go for flat, just a flat finish. And application method, since it's wall paint, we can apply it a few different ways. So it looks like it was applied by roller, brush, or spray. I'm going to go ahead and go with spray. Uh, that looks good. Under special effects, we can add a few things. If I go ahead and render this out, it's going to come out very, very dark at the moment. Okay. Let me close that. I'm just going to minimize the material editor for now. I want to show you something in a moment. Let me deselect all that stuff there. Right now, I'm going to go to uh, my render setup. F10 is a shortcut for that. And under the indirect illumination tab, I can see final gather is already turned on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I can put it down to a draft quality, which is probably a really good idea. You can see it's only going to fire off 50, uh, 50 rays per final gather point. I'm going to knock that down to about 32 simply because that's... Uh, that's just going to render out faster. The least amount of final gather rays you have, the faster you're going to render out. When you're doing test renders, speed's extremely important. I'm going to go down to the uh, caustics and global illumination rollout, and you can see that GI or global illumination is turned off. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay. And as soon as I do that, if I render this out again, you're going to notice that things are getting much much brighter. Now we have global illumination coming from the sunlight outside into our scene. You notice that our scene is hard to see though, even though it's brighter doesn't look very natural, it doesn't look very nice, but we're getting there. So I'm going to go back to the material editor and I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion. Okay, and what ambient occlusion is going to do, if I go ahead and render this out again, basically now we can see more details in the scene. We can see the edges of the walls where they connect. We can also see the, the details in the, in the front doors. Okay, so things become a little bit more visible and pop out a little bit more thanks to ambient occlusion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ambient occlusion max distance here. I'm going to increase it to one foot. I'm going to take the samples here, increase that to 32. That way we get some nice smooth ambient occlusion. The round corners parameter I'm going to turn on as well. What that's going to do, it's going to cause a fake beveling effect on all the straight edges. So if you render them out from up close, it, will, it won't look like a, like a razor edge. It'll look like a nice soft beveled edge, even though we didn't have to go and do it to the geometry, which of course saves us work and time. Okay? So let me go ahead and render that out again. And the ambient occlusion effect will be probably a little bit stronger. Okay? It's a little bit softer and spreads out a little bit more. A little subtle detail, but it does make a difference. Okay? Alright. So I'm going to say that I'm happy with my uh, material settings here. I'm going to close the material editor. Okay? So we're starting to get there. Back in the render setup window under global illumination, I'm going to take the global illumination multiplier here and I'm going to increase it. I'm going to take it and I'm going to increase it to 2. So now if I render this out again, my global illumination is going to be brighter. And as you can see, it is brighter. So you can see a little bit more in, uh, in our scene here. Now, the first thing you notice is that our scene is not very bright. That's because of the direction of the sunlight. Let me close this stuff here. If I go back outside, I'll see my sunlight is right on top of the building, so all of it's being blocked by the roof. What I'm going to do is, if I go over here to the uh, Modify tab here, there's a button that says Setup. Let's click on that, and that's going to open up the time of day configuration. I can actually place a time of day and location. So if I look over here under Location, the default location is San Francisco, California. I can click on Get Location and I get myself a map. And wherever I click on a map, it'll go to the nearest city that's in this list of locations. Okay? We can switch the map from North America to South America. We can go to Australia, Europe, Africa, anything here. I'm going to go to North America. 
I'm going to go to Miami, Florida, since that's where we're located. I'll hit OK. All right. And that's going to change the latitude and longitude to match up with the location on the Earth that I chose. The other thing I can do is come up here to the time of day settings. And by default, it's set to 1200 hours, which is noon. I could set it to 1400 hours, which is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to put it at 10 hundred hours, 10 in the morning. You can also choose the month, day, and year. Okay, so it's a very powerful daylight system. Now you can see the sun. It's going to come in through the front windows there. If I come in here and I render this out, let me just try to position my camera here a little bit better. If I render this out from here, my lighting uh, would have completely changed. And you can see that it did. Now that looks pretty nice. So it looks like it's 10 o'clock in the morning and the sunlight's coming in through the front there and all those nice windows that we created earlier. So now I have plenty of lighting coming in here. Looks pretty nice. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go back to the render setup window. And I'm going to set up my final uh, global illumination render settings. Right now I have only 20,000 photons per light. There's only one light in the scene, the sunlight. So uh, it's emitting only 20,000 photons, which is a very small number. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 1 million. So that's one six zeros. Okay. 1 million sounds like a lot, but when you're working with mental ray and global illumination, you need to use millions of photons to get yourself a, a pretty pleasing result. Okay. One, once, uh, once that's done, I'm also going to come up here to the maximum number of photons per sample. And I'm going to increase that to 4,000 just to make sure I have really good accuracy. It's not really going to slow down rendering time, so I'm going to leave that uh, like so. That's pretty good. Let me go back to my final gather settings. I'm going to leave it at these uh, preview settings. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the setup window here. And if we render this out from different angles, just come in here and view this from a few different angles here, we can get ourselves some uh, pretty interesting renders. And we'll render this out from a few different angles. See what we have here. Pretty interesting. So we get ourselves a pretty traditional clay render that we can uh, that we can see the entire entire structure that we modeled here. Then you get some interesting angles. And I'm just skipping ahead in the video. Um, skipping most of the of the render time here just so you don't have to sit here render uh, seeing this render over and over again so in case you're wondering why it's rendering so fast that's why okay so it looks pretty cool we've got ourselves a nice daylight system and I encourage you to go ahead and render this out from different angles and play around with the lighting a little bit and the material the wall paint and all that stuff and uh, see what you can come up with okay so that's going to do it for this tutorial. I'd like to thank you for supporting i3D. All of us here are uh, very thankful. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, feel free to come to our website, visit our forums, and uh, just drop us a line. Tell us what you think, uh, what you'd like to see in training, or any opinions or thoughts or anything like that. Or if you have any questions or need any help with anything with 3DS Max uh, 2010, or 3D in general, let us know. Okay. Right, so thanks a lot for watching. This does it for the uh, first volume in this production series of, uh, of training products. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue working uh, on the scene here. And we're going to detail it. We're going to get into some uh, pretty heavy modeling and just keep working uh, production-wise to, to create a, a very complete, nice scene from beginning to, to end. Th thanks again, and I'll definitely hope to see you in the next volume in this series of tutorials.